Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna be looking at the logarithmic regression of Bitcoin prices as we move into the unknown over the next several years. And yes, my four-year-old did recently make me watch Frozen. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. So in this video, we're gonna make a few dubious projections which could obviously be um, put under a lot of scrutiny and criticism, um, but it's more or less a fun video to see where we could be headed over the next few years using a little bit of mathematics. So let's go ahead and dive in. So this chart here just simply shows the logarithmic regression curves of the Bitcoin prices and, and the fact that during the last market cycle, we, we were in between the yellow and orange regression band for the better part of two years, a little over two years. And you can see we've spent a lot of time in this market cycle between the yellow and orange regression bands. And in fact, we've recently rallied up to the yellow regression band. Now, one thing you should note is that the yellow regression band here is actually at a higher price than we were uh, a little over a year ago when we went to the purple regression band back in the summer of 2019, which rallied to 14,000. The reason for this is these are monotonically increasing, okay? And that's why this price is actually higher than this one, despite the fact that we're one full lower regression band down. But that's actually not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to, is to make a few dubious projections outward in terms of looking at what, you know, what have been some historical trends at least in terms of, of the Bitcoin price as measured from low to low and as measured from high to high. So with that in mind, let's put on the peak values. So, and these three peaks I just quickly grabbed uh, on online. I'm sure it, it's gonna vary depending on exactly what exchange you use, but these were more or less the peaks, the three major peaks we have seen thus far. And these were the three major bottoms. So around a couple bucks, one around 162, 163, and then the last one around you know 3100, 3150, somewhere in that ballpark here, I put 3166. Now, with this in mind, one of the things we can look at is, is, is take some ratios between these, uh, these, these values, and, and you can see that to go from 30, $33 or so up to 1184, it was a 36X move. So 36 times from peak to peak. And then the next peak was approximately 17 times. So we went from a 36X from peak to peak to a 17X from peak to peak. We can also note that the ratio between these numbers is around 0.47X, so approximately half. Um, and we'll, we'll need that to try to project out in the future, which could be all the way out here. Now, you know, I'm, I'm drawing it in 2023. I'm sure a lot of you think it, it's going to happen at the end of 2021. If it does, great, we'll be ready for it. Let's be prepared though for, for a, a, a potentially lengthening cycle, um, which is what I think will happen. But whether you think it, you know, whether you think it's going to happen sooner or later, we can still use these, these ratios to try to get an idea of where the price could be headed. Now, if we try to if we try to figure out, okay, well what what multiple would could we could we somewhat dubiously extrapolate? Well, if we were to say take the same ratio yet again and say that the next peak will be that the multiple between peaks will be about 0.47x, another half or so, then that means that the price as measured from the peak of the last cycle could be um, uh, you know, one eighth of the next peak. So instead of, you know, in, instead of um, 17, so instead of a 36x or a 17x, maybe this will be an 8x, which would actually put the price of Bitcoin at the next peak at approximately $159,000 you know, plus or minus a few K, what's a few K among friends. We can we can look at a potentially plausible path to get there. But again, I don't really know um, exactly how we're gonna get there. I, I think it's going to be a, a, a long journey, but again, we'll be there every step of the way. Now, let's take a look at the bottoms. Uh, one of the things we note is that from bottom to bottom, the first one was about an 81X. And then from here, from this bottom to this bottom, it was about a 20X or so. So the ratio between those is approximately 0.24 or about one fourth or one fifth, I should say, or sorry, one fourth. Yeah, one fourth for about 0.24X. So if we were to try to somewhat dubiously extrapolate that and set another 0.24X or approximately one fourth, then it might put us at around 5X up 
as measured from bottom to bottom, which would mean that the next theoretical bottom would be at 15,830 in several years. Now, does this make sense at all, right? Can we look at this and say, okay, well, does anything about this make sense? Well, one thing that would, would, would be strange if this were true, and I don't think this is going to be the next bottom, would be that the next bottom would be uh, lower than the prior peak of full market cycle before, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And one of the reasons this doesn't make sense is because we're essentially assuming um, uh, you know, a, a pretty constant reduction in volatility, which is likely not the case because we've had several videos showing that um, you know, volatility is, is not necessarily decreasing in a, in a, you know, in a, um, uh, a very specific you know, linear fashion or, or anything like that. So what we could do is, is be even more dubious and say, well, we know volatility reduction isn't going to be um, super easy to measure, but what if we put an epsilon into in front of each of these multiples? Right? We're, getting, we're getting into left field at this point, but I just wanna draw your attention to the fact that just because this was 0.47x does not mean this one would be. And in fact, because volatility is reducing fairly significantly from one cycle to the other, I would argue that the next one would likely be a lower multiple than, than 0.47. Um, now, exactly how much lower? I don't know. I mean, it could be it could be very slightly lower, or it could be significantly lower. But the point is, is that we cannot take one data point and then necessarily extrapolate a second data point. This is not how it works. And and anyone in science or engineering could could tell you that. But the point is just to have a little fun in terms of looking at at projections in the Bitcoin price and see where we may be headed. I mean, for instance, suppose epsilon equals eight or 0.8. Note down here, I, I did the inverse of it. So one over epsilon since our, we're, we wanna, we're gonna push up. So in a sense, the peaks will be less fantastic, but the bottoms will be less um, horrific uh, in, terms of, in terms of how, you know, at what level we drop to. So suppose epsilon were 0.8, then that would put this ratio at about 0.38, this one at about 0.3, and that would make this six and a half, and then this one six. This would put the price peak at approximately $129,000, and then the next bottom would be at $19,000. Again, I don't think this will happen either. I think one of the things to take note of is the fact that all halvings, so every time we've had a halving, the price of Bitcoin has, has been essentially at the fair value. Um, and, and I don't actually have the fair value drawn on here, but historically speaking, it's been at the fair value, and that's one of the other regression charts that we show in some other videos. And so we've looked forward into, you know, in a few years from now at the future having in 2024, and we know by that time, the fair value of Bitcoin should be around $40,000. So what I think will happen is that we'll probably go up north or around $100,000, probably between 100 to 150, somewhere in that ballpark, and then after doing that, we will we will have a bear market that might bottom out at around forty to fifty thousand dollars, and then that would mean that the from from bottom to bottom it would actually be a thirteen x. So instead of going say like eighty to twenty to five, it will it will um, not be as drastic of a of a slowdown to where it just essentially drops to nothing. Because if you project that forward one more cycle, we're we're basically um, getting into kind of the uh, very very low volatility because if you you know if you take this divided by four you get twenty you take this divided by four you get five if you were to go if you were to divide by four again you're getting one point something right and and so this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense so it probably if I were to guess it would probably the the rate of decrease would slow down like I don't think it's going to be one fourth and then another one fourth because we know macro volatility is reducing. And so therefore you could imagine that it, it might actually, um, uh, this would actually not be quite as drastic uh, in the same manner as this would not be quite as drastic. So I hope this kind of gives you an idea of, of generally what I'm thinking will happen. Again, a lot of these numbers on here are in terms of their extrapolation are, are very dubious and this is not meant to be a definitive chart of exactly what would happen, but it's just to show you what could happen if we were to if we were to continue any remnant of the trends that we've seen over the past decade and and very dubiously extrapolate them forward i would not put a ton of credence into any of these exact numbers 
we'll see we'll see where the market takes us over the next few years and and we'll be ready for it every step of the way so if you guys like the content please subscribe to the channel I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers. Hopefully, I was planning on trying to get there by the end of the year. Maybe we can get there by the end of November. Um, but please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up if you guys like the content. We have a lot of other videos on the channel you guys might like, which you guys should go check out. And then also, we have the, the, the premium list, which you can find a link to in the description below into the cryptoverse.com if you want access to uh, weekly premium reports, weekly premium videos a Telegram alerts channel, a private Telegram chat room, a risk dashboard, and the risk dashboard is what I use to trade in terms of dynamically DCing in and out of the market. Also, you'll get access to some tele, tele or sorry, some trading view indicators that I've, that I've put together, some of the logarithmic regression stuff. So a lot of perks, check it out into the cryptoverse.com. At the very least, subscribe to the channel and check out the Telegram channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.